Right, how are we doing everyone? Um, yeah, welcome to my latest vlog. I wasn't really planning on doing this vlog, but uh, to be honest, got an opportunity to go up to Linear and uh, meet up with a couple of my colleagues, Dean and Dave up there, and uh, had the opportunity to fish on St. John's for uh, 36 hours we did. And um, yeah, it went really well. It was basically mid-April, uh, quite cold. We had a northeasterly wind blowing. Um, and we turned up, got the swims, and to be fair, I had a chat with the guy that was next door who'd been there a few days. Paul, is, Paul, his name was. Lovely chap, really nice guy. Shout out to Paul, you helped out a treat on this trip. Um, and he turned around and said that he'd been there a few days and actually the fish didn't want bait. They weren't feeding on bait. Um, which for linear, you know, like when you go up to linear, you expect to be fishing, you know, two or three on a spot, um, put a bait over the top of it. Um, and he said that and, you know, you're sort of thinking, oh, is that true? Or is it just the fact that the fish moved away from him? But actually what I decided to do is to go in with a, a very softly, softly approach. So I basically fished, um, I got there in the evening time. I put up two rods on solid bags with pellet inside it and then flicked a zig out there as well. Um, about a seven foot zig, I think it was. And I fished that until, so I went to bed, woke up at midnight, I think it was. And I could just hear fish sloshing. You know, they were like rolling going over all over the place, like out in the middle of the lake. They're like down close in the right hand edge here. They're really active, the fish. And um, I sort of sat there and it got to about three o'clock in the morning and I was like, I've got to make some changes here. You know, like I can't just, oh, I can't just sit here and have this going on. Um, <clears throat> and Paul said he'd had a few fish on maggot bags because you're allowed to put maggots inside your bags at Linear, but you can't spot it out. So um, I nicked some maggot off of Dean. Thank you very much, Dean. And uh, yeah, three o'clock in the morning, repositioned two bags out there, same spots, but just put the maggots inside the bags and tipped off the baits with a, uh, a little bit of maggot back on the spots or the same sort of area and then kept a zig out there. And uh, first thing in the morning, well, about 7.30 in the morning, the right hand rod went off and I had my first fish. Um, so after that, I switched over. I think I kept the middle rod on the zig all day um, until a about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, I think it was. And I switched that over to uh, a maggot bag as, as well then. But basically it was one of those sessions where you just sort of figured it out as you went along. Um, and by the, basically I, on the second night, I went to bed quite early because I was exhausted from being up for most of the night the night before. Went to bed about 9.30, 10 o'clock, I think. But I was up at midnight. So I had two and a half hours sleep. Up at midnight, um, I had my first fish at midnight, I had one shortly after that, 12.30 I think it was, and then that was it, I was on it, I was like, no, I'm not sleeping, I'm just going to see how many fish I can rack up, um, and I stayed awake until I think 6.30 in the morning I think it was, and then I finally had to get an hour's sleep before the rod went off, um, but yeah, I think it sort of worked it out as the session goes on, and that's that's what I really enjoy, you know, I enjoy, I I'm not one of these anglers that can just sit there and like put the rods out at night time. If I get a bite, leave the rod in until the, the morning. Or if I wake up and hear fish jumping or showing, not act on it, I've got to be active with my fishing. Um, and it was nice. I ended up with 11 fish. Um, so once I switched over to those tactics, I had 11 fish in 24 hours. Uh, I had, oh, I can't even remember the list of fish. They're all over 20 pounds. Um, I had a few 28s, a 34, 4, I had a 37, 8, beautiful fish. The 34 was nice. I had a leather as well. That was a really nice fish. I had a leather for ages. And some really nice young scaly ones as well that were sort of between 20 and 27 pound, I think it was. But um, yeah, really, really cool session. One of the things that was noticeable was that I was actually, I was getting all the bites if I didn't feel a drop. So basically there's a silk, there's silk weed out in linear. And whenever I was casting those bags out, feeling it down, and it it was just sitting, I was like, right, that's a fish. And sure enough, it was. Every time I cast out, I felt it down, it went bang like that and cracked down. Wasn't doing bites. And I think the reason for that is that during the session, there was, you've all seen them, I think they're called alder flies or something, but they're like black bugs that have got like quite see-through wings. Um, they can't fly very well, but... They were all over the place, all over the floor, all over the bivy. There's obviously a hatch going on out there in the middle of the lake somewhere. And I think that the carp, they may have been, they weren't taking the zigs. So they may have been taking the bugs off the surface, like right at the very top. But I think what they were doing is that the, the bugs were obviously hatching out. The larvae were hatching out of the, 
the bottom, probably in the silk in the silkweed. And then they were sort of like coming out of there and then making their way up to the top. And I think the fish were just on the naturals. I think it was just that sort of like that time of year where um, the fish were just switching on to these, this hatch that was going on in the bottom. And that wasn't happening on gravel. You know, that, that would have been happening in the weed and in the silt, which is where I was getting the bites from. Um, and it just goes to show, like, I, I thought I, was, I wasn't going to put a vlog together, but I thought, you know what, why not? Because... I've had a hit of fish out of Lydia, um, St. John's, and people may be saying, oh yeah, well, yeah, that's nothing special. But the lake only did, I think, three other fish whilst I was there. Um, and one of the noticeable things that happened was is that people were leaving swims, and then you'd see half an hour later, or even like 10 minutes later, someone else would go into the same swim they've just come out of. And the first thing that most people were doing they, was they were getting the leaden rods out, wrapping up to the maximum wraps that you're allowed in that swim so say it's 20 wraps or 18 wraps or 22 wraps thumping out a lead feeling it go crack and then spawning a the granny out of it like honestly the amount of people that turned up there and just found a spot put bait on it put the rods on it and then blanked yeah um now i'm not saying that that doesn't work i love spot fishing and i went up there i will say this now i went up there with a bucket of prepared bait right um, that I made the night before, put a load of liquid inside, it's a load of uh, Nutribase Trigger, ground it up, had some corn in there, put a load of li Trigger liquid on there and stuff. And I went out there really excited to spot fish, to be putting, you know, two, three rods on a spot, spawning over the top of it. I was like, yeah, that's, you know, I can't wait for this, a few spinners over the top of it. I was like, this is going to be ace. But when I got there, like, I listened to the people that have been there before me and decided not to go in with bait and just to fish solids. And to be honest with you, I, I really didn't want to fish solids up there. I wanted to fish, like I say, over, over bait and find a nice clear spot. But it just goes to show that you don't always have to be fishing on a spot. As long as you're presented, and I was, it was thick silkweed, you know, like when I was coming in, it was all up the, all up the leader and stuff, you know, it was clinging to the line, it was all over the lead and things. Um, but they were rooting it out and they wanted the bait inside that silkweed, so... Yeah, it just goes to show, you know, I got it right that time. I don't always get it right far from it, but um, just thought I'd put a little vlog together to say, you know, don't uh, don't go with any preconceptions, I suppose. You know, don't go with a preconceived idea of this is what I'm going to do. Get to the lake, chill out a little bit, have a cup of tea, speak to a few people, and then figure it out. And uh, and once you figured it out, if you want to catch fish, work at it. Yeah, that's um. I think that's the moral of the story. I could have had a few fish and then just wound in and left the rods in there and been like, yeah, I had two fish last night. But because um, I was recasting, some of the fish wiped out the lines, I was redoing bags, putting out those maggot bags. And it's hard work fishing maggot bags in solids because you can't pre-tie them. So every time you wind in the rod in, you've got to dry the lead off, get it all dried off, do the bag again with the maggots in there, tie it up, cast it out. You know, it's pretty, pretty much continuous all through that second night that I was doing that. Um, but yeah, paid off. Anyway, listen, that's enough of me waffling on. Uh, I'm out in my new tackle den, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, enjoy this vlog. There's just a, it's just a real amateur, stuck it together. Um, took a little bit of footage whilst I was out there on the bank catching fish. So if you enjoy it, you enjoy it and give it a subscribe and a like. Uh, if you don't enjoy it, sorry people. I've probably wasted 10 minutes of your life. Anyway, take care, speak to you soon.
Well, there we go, 37 and a half pounds. It's a John's mirror. Second one of the trip. Oh, absolute stunner. Made up for this one. Put a little maggot bag. Yeah, buzzing. Alright, let's get back. There we go. It's uh, getting to evening time now. So far, hopefully get a few more tonight. But if not, five fish, I'm a happy man. Right, let's get this one back. Let's see if we can catch some more. Ooh. I don't know if the camera picked up, but another fish just boshed out in the swim. Well, it's uh, it's about midnight now on Thursday night, and I've just got my sixth fish of the session in the net. Um, so far this session I've had a 20, one around about 20, nice scaly little one. Um, I've had a 25, a 28, a 34.4 and a 37.5 and, and this one, um, it's not as big as the, the 30s, um, it's probably a nice mid 20, but lovely scaly one. But uh, yeah, it's the middle of the night so I'm not going to wake anyone up to go and get some steals of this one. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd go over and uh, have a little look with the camera and show you on film. So yeah, I'll probably put this together in a little uh, vlog piece that you're watching. It's going really well up here on St John's, we're up fishing on peg 39 I think I'm on. I'm quite busy, always busy up here. Um, and yeah, just fishing little little solid bags with maggots inside. You're allowed to fish maggots in the bags, you can't spawn maggots this time of year. <coughs> so uh, yeah, just opt in to fish little maggot bags and cast it into where the fish want to feed, which seems to be in the silt weeds, not on the clear spots that a lot of people are fishing. So, um, although it's busy, I haven't seen another fish out in the last 24 hours. Um, so yeah, everything's going really well, but yeah, middle of the night, it's quite cold. Um, it's, what, what, where are we, you in middle of April now? And to be honest with you, it's still, still quite chilly. I think it's down to about four degrees tonight, five degrees, so. But uh, the fish are boshing, they're really active at night time, really active. Um, but yeah, this is the first night time bite I've had, and the first bite on the left hand rod. So, it's all going well, people. So yeah, let's go and have a little look at this fish, shall we? Yeah, she is sulking in the net. Let me just pull up so you can see. That may scale you on this one. There she is. Nice linear. Sitting down there, probably about mid 20s. But I'll get weighed and uh, and slip her back. Yeah, happy days. Let's see all the rods. Faith West E12s. In the business out here on St John's. Right, so here she is. Let's have a little look. Dave's woken up to come and uh, help me with this. What an absolute cracker of a fish that is. You just take your torch off it for a second, Dave, because oh, there you go. That's it. Look at those scales popping. Absolute beauty. Uh, 22 12 she went. Happy carp angler here. I'm not going to do any self takes or sorry, steals at night time because I want to risk sort of uh, yeah, keeping her out of water too long and getting all wet and cold to be honest with you. So <laughs> let's slip her back and see if we can get another one. Right, well, how's your luck? I was literally just about to rebag the rod, add that fish on. Oh, my shadow's in. Where's my shadow? On? There we go. Yeah, just about to rebagged the rod and off she went again with one twenty-one and a quarter I think that one is so happy days the other side I don't know if you can, can you roll her over Dave just so we can see if you can turn her over have a look at that look at that side there absolute beauty I know that uh, some of the old St John's legends of past may be uh, getting old and passing, but there's a new, a new breed in this lake that are definitely going to set to go on to be monsters and beautiful fish at that. Lovely stuff. Right. Right, it was three o'clock in the morning. Just got my uh, third fish of the night. You ready? Da -da 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 -da. Check this beauty out. Oh, make 
sure. That's how I get the torch light out. There you go. Look at that, mate. 28 pound on the nose. Absolute stunning mirror. They've got a no sacking, uh, no sacking policy on here, so I'm not going to retain it or anything like that. Just get these video clips and slip her back, but really good fight this one. There we go. I thought I'd just take a little look at the rig and uh, the set of them using. So you can see there's got a short braided hook link, little pink bit of uh, fake corn with a big bunch of, I say big bunch, about 10 red maggots just uh, on top of it. Going through to an inline lead on uh, one of the average quick change stems. You can't quick change when you're fishing maggots, so it's difficult to do it with solids because the maggots just, uh, yeah, don't like being in the bag for too long. So, um, that's the rig I'm using, and then you can see there I've just got my little bit of pellet going in the bottom of the bag, a couple of scoops of maggot, a bit more pellet on top, and out she goes. But that's been doing the business. <coughs> right, so a little update. Um, it's 4.30 in the morning, and I've just had, I was just pouring a cup of tea, and I've just had my fourth fish since uh, midnight. So, um, it's probably probably just under twenty pound, I think. But uh, yeah, I've got uh, this one, so the small one, a twenty one, twenty two, and a twenty eight um, since midnight. So feeling pretty tired. It's been absolutely carnage in my swim. You can't see it because it's dark. But uh, yeah, everything's just getting trashed. I'm uh, retying bags as I've been playing a few of the fishing. They've done wiped out other rods and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cold and. Uh, working hard to get these bites but it's cool um, I haven't heard any other, other alarms going off um, definitely tactics seem to be working it's just nice being out on the bank it's just really nice being out on the bank and uh, yeah having a few bites and catching a few fish so we'll see what this blog comes together like but uh, hopefully you're enjoying it I'll try and get a few sort of like daylight shots as well but yeah a little update that's the fourth fish since midnight happy days Right, this is fish four. I think I owe an apology actually because I called this a small one. It's absolutely gorgeous and 23 pound at that, so it's not small. It's uh, look at those scales, isn't it? Beautiful scale pattern running down it. 23 pound on the nose. Yeah, absolute beauty. I thought it was only a sort of like a, an upper double in the net, but. I was wrong. Happy days. Let's get her back, see if we can get another one before daylight. First thing in the morning, it's 7.30 in the morning. Not had much sleep last night. In the nets here, we've got fish number 10. We've got fish number 11. 10th fish is a lovely leather. And then we've got a scaly one for number 11. Um, yeah, over the moon with this. One on the left hand rod that was long, one on the middle rod, which is quite short over to the right hand side. But uh, certainly went off last night. I think I had, uh, I don't even know how many fish I had last night. Seven fish or six fish. But, uh, yeah, over the moon with these. It's nice to wake up through the here, fashion. So, it's made. 